Hello, and I'd like to welcome you to our Wednesday night service, and appreciate you being here with us. And uh, we're going to, uh, I'm going to give you some prayer requests uh, for all of us to be praying for here in a few minutes. Um, and then we'll be bringing the message here in just a moment. Uh, continue to pray, if you would, for our uh, many of our church folks that are dealing with uh, the virus. I uh, appreciate your prayers for our family, and I appreciate, uh, I know others appreciate your prayers. Um, and uh, the Lord knows who each individual is, and and uh, I know uh, some families are just passing it around. Uh, and it's kind of weird how they do the quarantine stuff. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, I'm out of quarantine now, so thank the Lord for that. Uh, but uh, still about 90% and feel a little brain fog and, and tired. I think uh, others are dealing with some of the same stuff. So just be praying for them if you would. Um, <clears throat> anyway, let me give you a few other prayer requests here before uh, we pray. And uh, continue to pray if you would for the radio station. They're having uh, their share -a -thon this week. Uh, I was supposed to go up there tomorrow, but just out of uh, extra precaution, I'm not going to do that. Um, but anyway, pray for them that uh, the money they uh, will raise will go, of course, it all goes to a good cause. Uh, for 83 cents a minute, you can get the gospel out uh, across the, almost the entire world. I think it's 183 countries. And uh, so that's Fundamental Broadcasting Network. And our local uh, station is WMLJ, where Mountaineers love Jesus. And that is 90.5 FM. And uh, so... If you're able to and you'd like to give a little extra uh, towards that, you can call the radio station. Uh, the way that works is, let's say you donate $50, you have six months to pay that $50. Uh, but anyway, that's a, a good way to just get the gospel out. Uh, you can hear some good preaching, some good godly music uh, on the radio station. So pray for that ministry. Their share -thon is this week, and uh, just pray that all go well. Let me give you a couple of prayer requests if I could. <clears throat> uh, pray for Josh. He is having his surgery uh, tomorrow morning, and I know he would appreciate uh, our prayers. I think he's traveling uh, there tonight, and uh, so pray for traveling mercies. He'll be having surgery there in Morgantown. Also pray uh, for Miss Laura, and she is supposed to have surgery on her wrist uh, Monday, if I understood that correctly. Uh, so just pray for her. Um, they're going to try to get her wrist put back together. Uh, she had, she's done a lot of damage to it. So just pray for, uh, Miss Laura. I know she would love to be able to get back to playing the piano and, and other things that she's done. Um, also pray for Marietta Lambert. Uh, Marietta had some cancer removed, uh, from her nose. Uh, I think that was done today, so pray for her as she continues to heal. And then uh, pray for Nick Bolin, uh, pray for his dad's family. Uh, Nick's grandma uh, has lung cancer, and they have called in hospice for her. Uh, so uh, that's Nick Bolin, his family. Uh, that's uh, Steve and Tracy uh, Sauer's son. And then also... Uh, McCreary had contacted me, a McCreary man, and asked us to pray for his mom, Eleanor Mann. Uh, so if you would pray for her, they found out she has ovarian cancer. And I know that, uh, you know, that would mean a lot to McCreary. Uh, but uh, just pray for her that the Lord will direct in that as well. So <clears throat> let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's ask his blessing on those requests. Uh, again, pray for our families who are continuing uh, to heal. And I know <clears throat> I'm going to keep clearing my throat, and it's going to be a, a, not just a nuisance to me, but probably to you as well. Uh, it's just got to get this crud out. I don't feel totally horrible or anything, just kind of drained and tired, but it's just stuff that's there you got to deal with. Um, but anyway, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing on these requests. Our Father, we come to you, Lord, asking that you will take care of each one of these needs that, Lord, we just mentioned. Lord, I'm sure there are many others that, many unspoken requests that uh, are represented by the folks that are watching our services. Uh, thank you for each one of them. I pray that, Lord, uh, 
those who are dealing with uh, sickness right now and their families, I pray that you will put your healing hand upon them and, and just help strengthen them, Lord. And Lord, we're so thankful that uh, there's a lot of good news from all of this, even though we know the number of cases in our county have gone up. There's nobody hospitalized from these things. That's a tremendous praise, and we thank you for that. And, uh, Lord, I'm glad that most folks that are dealing with this have very uh, minor issues uh, with it, and that's good. Uh, but, Lord, I just pray that you help us to uh, continue to heal and uh, continue to get better. And, and uh, Lord, may we look to you as the great physician. Lord, it's we know that you've given doctors and nurses uh, great knowledge and, and understanding in, in a lot of things. But, but Lord, ultimately, everything as far as our health is in your hands. And uh, so we just commit, uh, Lord, our care to you. And then, Father, I pray for, uh, pray for those that are getting ready to have surgery. I pray for Josh. I pray that you will watch over him and comfort his heart. I know he's been very troubled by this for some time. And uh, Lord, just pray that as he's having surgery in the morning, that you will uh, give him the strength he needs and, and just give him the peace, Lord, that is going to pass all understanding and, and uh, help keep his heart and mind uh, through Christ Jesus. And then, Father, I pray also for uh, Miss Laura. I pray that you will help her uh, surgery on Monday to go well. And I uh, pray that uh, you help her wrist, uh, everything to get put back together properly and heal quickly so she can get back to uh, playing the piano and doing the things that she would like to do. And, and uh, so just watch over her. And Father, we pray also for uh, Marietta. And uh, thank you, Lord, that uh, she got the cancer removed there from her nose. But I pray that you will help her to heal, help the soreness and things to go away and uh, watch over her. I pray for uh, Nick's, uh, Nick's family, his dad's family. I pray that you will uh, be with them as they're going through a difficult time. And uh, they've called in hospice there for his grandma. And I pray that, uh, Lord, as they all get together and um, they get a time to meet with her and, and uh, just enjoy those uh, moments they have together. And, uh, Father, just pray that you give them extra grace during this time as well. And, uh, Lord, I pray also for... Uh, Ellen Roman, as uh, she's found out she's had cancer, I pray that you help her to heal. And, uh, and Lord, just to uh, be able to, we know you can heal to the uttermost. You can take care of the cancer so that there's no problem. But, Lord, I know you have a plan and purpose for everything as well and uh, why we go through some things in our life. So I pray that you will be with, uh, be with her, be with McCreary and their family, and uh, just give them strength through this time. And, uh, Lord, I pray for the many unspoken requests, as I mentioned, that uh, the needs represented by our folks in the church, and uh, just take care of them, take care of our uh, our families, and, uh, Lord, take care of us spiritually. We pray for our country, Lord, as we're uh, coming up upon a very important election. And, uh, Lord, I know that uh, we all, as Christians, we have a responsibility to fulfill, and I pray that, above everything else, Lord, that we will pray and seek your face and what you would have us to do. And, uh, and then, Lord, help us to be obedient to those things. And, uh, and, Lord, we know that you're the only answer for our country as far as turning our nation around. And so we're looking to you and trusting you uh, that you will see us through. And, and, Lord, no matter which way this thing goes, we know ultimately uh, there is a much greater plan and purpose that we can't always see and, uh, Lord, we're going to rejoice and we're going to be thankful, uh, just a grateful people. And, uh, Lord, we're going to praise you for all of these things. And, uh, so we want to thank you ahead of time for what you're going to do. And, uh, Father, we ask that you bless now, bless the message <clears throat> and, uh, Lord, just guide and direct, uh, these next few minutes that we have, we ask and pray it all in Jesus name. Amen. I wanted to mention also before I get into, uh, the message um, our Sunday services are going to be, uh, online like we're doing right now. Uh, that will be 11 o'clock and 7:30. Um, I will post a note on the door for anybody who comes to our service. I think we just need to kind of let this thing run its course a little bit longer. Uh, we will probably, I'm going to try to talk to the deacons and see, uh, what they think about this. I've kind of bounced it off of a, a few of them, I think, but, uh, 
uh, maybe for evening service, maybe also doing something like a senior service uh, for the evening, Sunday evening service, uh, just to try to keep people spread out a little bit more. Um, you know, see if that's something that can help. Uh, as I mentioned before, thankfully, this is not the worst thing I've ever had, but uh, it's just kind of a, a pain in the neck, uh, literally. <laughs> but uh, it's just one of those things you deal with and, and go on. We knew it was going to happen. It was going to uh, find its way into our community, and it just found its way uh, here. So uh, we'll deal with these things that go on. But uh, anyway, I wanted to mention that about Sunday services. Lord willing, next Wednesday, we will pick back up to our normal uh, routine. <clears throat> uh, we'll have our Master's Club program uh, at 7.15 and then our Sunday or our Sunday, our Wednesday night service at 7.30 and, uh, and our prayer service during that time. Okay, well, if you would take your Bibles and turn with me to the Song of Solomon, chapter 2. The Song of Solomon, chapter number 2. I'm going to read one verse here and this one verse has a, a lot in it, <clears throat> and we're going to be looking at some other scriptures here uh, in tonight's uh, kind of message, Bible study that we're going to do. But Song of Solomon, chapter 2, and verse number 15. <clears throat> it says, Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. Now, <clears throat> that last little phrase there, our vines have tender grapes. Uh, this is talking about, uh, we're going to make application to this uh, in uh, tonight's message. Uh, but just looking at the choices and things we make in life. Our vines have tender grapes. You know, we never really fully comprehend and understand uh, our decisions and the consequences and results of our decisions. And it says here, take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. Now, in this day and time, they used to build walls to protect their vineyards. And sometimes they would set out traps to, to catch the foxes. And many times the, the big foxes weren't really the problem. It was the the little foxes that got through that did some of the greatest damage to the vine. They would destroy uh, the bottom part of the plant down towards the ground, and that would affect the fruit that came out later on the vine. So that's what it's referring to here. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine. So, you know, as we think about our choices we make in life, that's going to be the little foxes. Sometimes our choices we make seem so insignificant at the time. But there's a, a pattern that we ought to follow in the Word of God when it comes to making our, our choices. There's a pattern we ought to follow. And there's also sometimes very serious and sobering consequences when we make a wrong choice. Um, and again, that choice can seem so insignificant at the time. But uh, we don't see around the corner. We don't see what tomorrow holds, but God does. And that's why we need to seek his plan of action with how we ought to make these choices in life. So uh, let's pray, and we'll get right here into the message. Our Father, we thank you again for just the privilege we have to pray. And uh, Lord, I pray that you will guide and direct our thoughts now as we look here to scriptures, open our hearts and our understanding. Uh, I pray you help my voice to hold out. And uh, Lord, we just thank you again for uh, the fact that we have technology. We can still meet as a church like this. Uh, this is not the way we would prefer. But Lord, I'm thankful that uh, we do have this avenue available to us. And Lord, I'm asking that the Holy Spirit of God might move freely in our midst and might speak to each and every one of us. And Lord, there might be something that uh, the Holy Spirit puts his finger on in our heart and our life that Maybe it's not something that I, I mentioned by name, but Lord, it's just something that you are dealing with them about. Lord, I pray that uh, they will make a, de a decision for Jesus Christ, whether it's for salvation or whether it's just to be closer to him. Lord, whatever it is, uh, I pray that you will receive the honor and glory through the decisions made here tonight. We ask and pray all this now in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> 
So take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Let's uh, look here at some choices as we go through the scriptures, and these are choices that were not good choices, uh, but they had some very serious consequences. So take your Bibles and turn back with me to Genesis 13. Genesis 13, chapter 13. <clears throat> this is the story of Lot and Abram. And <clears throat> I'm not going to read the first part of this, but Abram and Lot, uh, their herdmen were striving with each other. They were having some problems. And there's a choice that Lot makes here. Let's start reading in verse number 8 of Genesis 13. It says, And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Now, this is important here in verse 10. Because remember, Abraham had a very close relationship with God. He was called the friend of God. Very close relationship. Lot has been kind of riding on his coattails, if you would, uh, religiously. And he's been right there with him through all this stuff. And uh, he's seen the altars that Abraham has, uh, that he's built. And he's seen all these great things that God has done for Abraham. But listen to what it says here in verse number 10 when it comes time for Lot to make this choice that he's going to make. It says, And Lot lifted up his eyes, and behold, all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. So of all the time that Lot spent with Abraham, one thing that Lot did not learn to do, and he should have learned to do this, and you better thank the Lord if you were brought up in a Christian home, if you have any type of upbringing in church, there's one thing you ought to learn to do in your Christian life. If you have been saved and you've been washed by the blood of the Lamb, there's one thing you really ought to learn to do, and that is to pray about your decisions. Here was a, a decision that to Lot probably seemed very harmless. He probably thought, wow, I'm getting one over here on Abraham. He said, anything I want to choose, any place I want to choose, I can go. And uh, that was almost like a no-brainer you know, for Lot. He just looked out and saw you know, the, the best of the land, saw everything that was going on. Uh, and said, hey, man, there's there's some green pastures down here. This would be tremendous for my cattle. And if, and if Abram's going to give me this stuff, I'm going to go ahead and take it. But one thing Lot did not do was pray. Now, how important is that to pray about this? Sometimes Christians even do stuff like this. They have a decision like this that Lot is making, and they pray about it, and they say, well, Lord... Uh, just show me what your will is. I believe this is what you want me to do. And basically, they've already made their decision, and they're just wanting God's stamp of approval on that decision. That's not the way it works. That's not the way it's to be done. There's a pattern that we find for seeking the Lord's will. Um, and as a matter of fact, it's taught throughout the whole, uh, the whole Bible. But in Proverbs chapter 3, these are some very familiar verses to us. I quote them many times. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Now that's very important. When it comes to making the choices, making decisions in our life, we are not to lean on our own understanding. Now why is that? Why do you think that would be the case? Well, the reason for that is because the Bible teaches us there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a path that, that looks good and looks clean and looks uh, perfect to us, but we don't know what's around the corner. God does. That's why we are not to lean on our own understanding. But listen to what else it says here. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall, speaking of God, he shall, that's a promise, 
he shall direct thy paths. So here is God telling us the pattern that he wants us to follow is simply to acknowledge him in all of our ways and he shall direct our paths. Whatever decision you have to make in life, remember it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. It's sometimes the, it's the little tiny decisions that don't seem to matter much, but that's going to have sometimes the greatest consequences uh, to our future. And we have another one here. Turn, if you would, to the book of Numbers, chapter 13. Numbers, chapter 13. <clears throat> now, again, we see another decision being made here. Numbers, chapter 13. This is where uh, the spies, the 12 spies, were sent to spy out the land of Canaan. And they come back here, and they're about to give the report. And so in Numbers chapter 13 and verse 26 is where I'm going to begin reading. And we're talking about the little choices, the little foxes that spoil the vines. We saw a lot made a horrible choice. He didn't pray about it. But look here at what happens to these people. Now, the children of Israel know God has promised them the land of Canaan. They know that. They're sent to spy out the land to see what kind of land it is and how to divide it up and all this. And this is where we're going to pick up here in Numbers 13, verse 26. It says, And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Now these are the giants. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Now, how in the world would they know what they look like in the sight of these Anakins? They had no idea what the Anakins thought of them. The Anakins could have been scared to death uh, because of God's report of the children of Israel that he had already sent into the land. But here were some people that had a choice to make. Uh, they knew that God was going to give them the land, but they said, we can't go into this land. The cities are walled. They're very great. Uh, the people there are strong. There's giants in the land. All of our enemies are there. They kept seeing one excuse after another. Now, did you notice something else that they did not do in this passage? They didn't pray and say, Lord, here's the problems we see, but what do you think of it? What do you think of all this? What do you think about these great walls? What do you think about the giants that we saw there? What do you think about all this, God? Should we still go in there? Didn't consider that at all. They just decided to turn away from it and, of course, walk away. Now, Caleb and Joshua, thank God, there's always uh, some people there who are willing to believe the Lord and willing to take a stand for what is right. But, uh, you know, sometimes we choose the easy path in life because we think there are going to be uh, less problems to encounter. I see this so often in churches. Uh, I see it in Christian circles. Uh, we don't choose the difficult path because we just like it easy. We think, you know, down the road, well, if I, if I do this, then I'm not going to have as many problems. I'm not going to have as many enemies. I don't want to cause any waves. I don't want to stir anything up. But, you know, it's, that's not the way we're to look at it. What we are to do is we are to do what is true and what is right, no matter what the consequences are. We ought to always do what's true and right, whether it's an easy path, whether it's an easy decision, or whether it's not. 
and we leave the results up to God. But again, something that we should always do is we should always acknowledge the Lord and we should ask him, Lord, what do you think about all this? And, you know, God, when we get saved, God leads us by his spirit. And as he's leading us by his spirit and he's directing us through his word, we simply obey and go forward and whatever it is that God is leading us to do. Now, another choice that we see in the word of God, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, I'm not going to take a lot of time to spend on this one, but uh, this is a choice that Saul made. Uh, Saul, the first king of Israel, he had a decision and Saul did not make a good choice. In 1 Samuel 15 and verse 22, <clears throat> now Saul here, he spared the best of the sheep and the oxen. He was supposed to destroy everything. He did not obey uh, what Samuel told him that here's what God wants you to do. He didn't obey that. And listen to what it says here in 1 Samuel 15 and verse 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. You know, this is another choice where it might have seemed to, to make sense to Saul at the time. So you know what? Why are we killing all of these good animals? We can use these animals for sacrifices later on. Uh, we're killing everything else. You know, we're doing everything else God to, God said to do. But you know, the people of the land, they also, whenever they capture a people, they save the king alive and they kind of use them as a trophy. And maybe we ought to do that just to prove to other people that we're nobody to be trifled with. You know, I don't know what was going through Saul's mind, but I do know this. It's the little foxes that spoil the vines. And it's those little decisions that seem so insignificant. And the consequences sometimes are so very great. Saul feared the people. He feared what others thought of him. And he thought more of that than what God thought of him. And that's a dangerous place for us to be in. We ought to always think more about what God thinks of us than what other people think about us. So let me give you another choice here. <clears throat> And uh, this is found in the New Testament. Uh, this is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23. I'm not going to take time to read through this. Uh, you can read from verse 13 all the way through verse 38. Uh, it's talking about the choice of the Pharisees. Jesus was preaching there to the scribes and Pharisees. And on seven different occasions, he calls them hypocrites. He says, he, called, he just says, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. And then he rebukes them for all of these different things that they're doing. But you know, what the, what the Pharisees were really doing is they were putting their ways before God's ways. They were putting their uh, religion that they had come up with before what the Word of God even said. And they were extremely religious people, but they were hypocrites. Uh, they expected other people to, to tow the line, but they themselves didn't tow the line. They themselves didn't, uh, you know, kind of walk the mark, if you would. They didn't do those things. And so Christ calls them out on it. But listen to what he says in verse 38. As he goes through and he rebukes them through most of that chapter, in verse 38, here's the consequences of their choice, where they have chosen their own ways over God's ways. He says, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. You see, it's the little foxes that spoil the vines, and our vines have tender grapes. They should have stopped and sought the Lord and said, God, what is it that we're doing? Is there anything we're doing that's wrong? Is there anything we're doing that displeases you? Uh, we want you to, uh, to teach us and show us. And you know, we ought to always be teachable as a Christian. We ought to always be willing to learn uh, from the Holy Spirit of God. And listen to that still small voice and what he's telling you. 
But it's the little foxes. It's those little decisions sometimes. You know, they, I'm sure they thought they were right. Things that they, they were doing, they thought, man, there's nobody quite like us. You know, we're, we've got it together. God's probably pretty pleased with us. But God wasn't pleased with them. Because the problem was they had all of the religion on the outside. Today, this would be like uh, somebody who's going soul winning every Thursday, uh, maybe working the bus route on Saturday. Uh, they're doing, they're at every service. They're singing the specials. They're uh, in the church and involved in the choir. They're teaching a the class. They've got all this religious activity going on. But the problem is God doesn't have their heart. That's a major, major problem. And that little choice, that little decision right there has severe consequences. And that's what God was trying to tell them when he says, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. That's not a good thing. And so <clears throat> we see the choice. Those little choices sometimes can have severe consequences. There's one other uh, one we're going to look at. There's actually two. I'm going to wrap it up here. There's the choice of the rich young ruler. In Matthew 19, there's a, a rich young ruler that comes to Jesus and he says, you know, Master, what good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And, and uh, you know, Jesus, of course, has a conversation with him. He says, well, why callest thou me good? There's none good but one. That is God. And, and uh, he says, look, if you want to inherit eternal life, then here's what you need to do. He said, keep the commandments. And this, this ruler said, well, which one do I need to keep? And so Jesus starts listing a bunch of commandments. Now, obviously, this guy was not, uh, he was not very tender <laughs> to the Holy Spirit of God because nobody has kept the commandments. You know, we have broken every commandment. We are, uh, we're liars, we're thieves, we're idolaters, we're murderers. That's what's in our heart. Our heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. And uh, if it wasn't for the grace of God giving us a new nature, uh, oh my, I tell you what, we would all be in a world of hurt. And uh, But this, this rich young ruler, because he wanted to justify himself, he goes, well, all of these things have I kept from my youth up. And uh, Jesus then said this. He said, okay, well, go and sell everything that you have and then come and follow me. And then the Bible says that this rich young ruler, he made a choice. And his choice was he went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. He had great riches. And you see that little choice, he loved money more than he loved God. The Bible tells us that we cannot serve God and mammon. This little choice that this man made was such a serious choice because he also missed salvation. He missed it. He did not follow the Lord Jesus Christ. He loved the things that he had in this world above everything else. You know, when you follow Jesus Christ, you may not have uh, everything that your neighbor has. You may not have all of the uh, you know, possessions and all the goods and things like that. But you have something far greater. And you have the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and that can never be taken away from you. And that relationship you have with God is so very precious uh, you ought to never take that for granted. And here was this rich young ruler who says, look, all these commandments I've kept from my youth up, but I'm still lacking something. Well, he sure was. He was lacking salvation because he loved the wages of sin. He loved his money more than he loved anything else. And uh, so again, we see very serious consequences over a, what seems to be, to him, a little tiny choice. And then one last one here. As we wrap this up, this is back in the Old Testament, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 3. You know, let me talk here briefly to, this is not just to the young people, but this is also to our adults, the choice of the friends that we hang around. You know, sometimes those choices seem very insignificant, but uh, they can have some super serious consequences. And the Bible says in 2 Samuel 13 and verse 3, And Amnon had a friend, and his name was Jonadab. Now, here was this friend of Amnon who, uh, Amnon had a crush on his half-sister Tamar, and, and Jonadab is going to now tell him, says, here's what you need to do. Uh, 
you know, don't go and ask David, you know, your father for uh, her hand in marriage. You know, you just need to do it this way. And he, the Bible says he was a very subtle man and he was very deceitful. And I'm sure to Amnon, Jonadab's advice probably seemed pretty good. Didn't seem very dangerous at all. But you know what? We read the rest of the story and we know what happened. It cost Amnon his testimony, but it also cost him his life. It killed him uh, because eventually Tamar's brother, Absalom, killed him. And so our acquaintances that we have at the time, you know, we even in our youth, sometimes we blow it off and say, well, I'm just young and, and, you know, we don't always have the right kind of friends and we just kind of blow it off like it's no big deal. But you better be very careful because you never know how far that so-called friend is going to take you. And I like the verse in Proverbs 13, 20 that says this, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You know, you're going to be like, eventually, the people you hang around. And this is why we need to choose to walk with wise men, walk with wise women. We need to be around the right influences. Because those seemingly insignificant choices with our friendships, our acquaintances, they can have some pretty severe consequences. And you know, again, you ought to seek the Lord. You ought to acknowledge him in all your ways. You ought to say, Lord, is this a, a good friend that I should have? Is this somebody I should be hanging around? Uh, is this somebody? Now, if it's not somebody you should be palling around with, maybe you just need to be a witness to them. Maybe you need to be a light to them and try to try to help them. But don't become buddy-buddy with them. Uh, you know, Be very careful with those things. Because so often what happens is they'll pull you down a whole lot faster than you'll ever lift them up. And uh, so these are the little foxes that spoil the vines. And these are the little decisions that seem to, uh, seem to be so insignificant, but they have such great consequences. And Joshua said it like this. He said, choose you this day whom you will serve. And I mentioned already, Jesus said, you cannot serve God and mammon. Their life's full of choices. But what choices are you going to make? What choices am I going to make? And don't let the little foxes spoil the vines. Remember, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And we are to acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways, and he shall direct our paths. So seek the Lord in prayer in everything. Seek him in prayer in every decision. And don't take any decision lightly because you never know what the full consequences are of it. Well, that's all the time we have, and I appreciate uh, you being here with us. And uh, we're going to have a word of prayer. And I don't know what decision you might need to make today. If you're uh, listening right now and you're not sure heaven's your home, I want to invite you to ask Christ to be your Savior and get saved. Uh, the Bible teaches us that we're all sinners. We all deserve God's wrath. We deserve hell and the lake of fire. And uh, that is the second death. And uh, I deserve it. You deserve it. We all deserve it. But thank God Jesus loved us so much. He sent his son to this earth to die on the cross in our place. And you can have a home in heaven if you will put your faith and trust in him. But there might be another decision you need to make. Maybe there's some choices that you've not been praying about. You thought, well, this is just a little decision. I don't need to pray about this. Maybe this message was for you because you need to pray about every decision, every choice, and seek God and acknowledge him in all your ways, and he shall direct thy paths. Well, let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for the word of God, and we thank you that, Lord, you love us enough to care about the path that we are following. And uh, Lord, I pray for each one listening, I pray that you will help us to realize that it's not always the, the big foxes, it's the little foxes that sometimes will do the greatest damage. And uh, Lord, we need to realize how important it is in every seemingly minor decision, Lord, how we need to seek your face and ask you what we should do. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you will bless us now. I pray for our folks who are still uh, healing from the virus and from sicknesses that are going around. I pray that you will touch them, help them to continue to get well. And Father, we ask all these things now in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Well, God bless you, and I hope you have a great evening.